Hey, what's going on guys? In this episode of Rebuilding the Colors, we're going to continue overhauling the interior. Let's get to it. So in the last episode, uh, if you missed that, you can catch that right here. But uh, we went ahead and worked on the back part of the car. So we mainly focused on the rear seats, the, the actual bench seat, and the back part of the seat. And we also did the uh, rear deck lid. Also took out a bunch of the pieces inside, like the uh, armrest, the rear door cover, anything like that. So uh, in this episode, I think we're going to try to tackle that dash. So we need to take the dash out. And the reason why we're going to take the dash out now is because I'm waiting for some parts for the rear. Uh, I'm missing the armrest uh, covers and the uh, door panels in the back. I'm also missing the door panels up front too. So I think we're going to go ahead and jump forward and pull out the dash and hopefully get that sprayed all down and change the color of that, make it black uh, with that dye. So let's go ahead and start taking a look, see what we need to do. And uh, I have kind of a brief instructions on how to do it I found online. So we'll go ahead and take those instructions and just dive right into it. So let's go. So we'll go ahead and collect a few things that we need to actually start this, uh, taking this dash out. Uh, first thing is, uh, like I said, I have the instructions here. I got them off of thisoldscar.com. Uh, Dwayne, the biologist uh, guy, he actually made up an awesome how-to on how to take out a dash out of a Supreme, a 71 Supreme. Should be pretty close to mine. Uh, might have some differences, but uh, we'll deal with that as we go through it. But I'll have these uh, in the description below to his uh, site. And then also, uh, Based upon that, we need a few tools like quarter inch drive sockets and ratchet. So 5 16 and quarter inch uh, socket and extension. Some flagging tape or masking tape to uh, write stuff on. Um, you also need, you also need uh, flathead screwdrivers, Phillips screwdrivers, a work light, and then also grab some baggies and a Sharpie. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and undo that battery. I actually don't have my battery in right now, so I'm going to skip, skip that step, but make sure to do that first. And let's go ahead and go on to step two. So the next thing I'm going to do is remove the things that I have added. So I've added things like my Holly Sniper. I've added these uh, um, temp gauge and battery gauge and oil gauge and also this tachometer. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those, set them off to the side, and uh, then we'll get to the next part. All right, we went ahead and took out those gauges and also the tack and everything like that. The next step is to remove the lower AC ducts. Uh, I don't have them, so I don't have to remove them. But if you have them in your car, you'll want to remove those next. And then also the 8-track player too. If you have the 8-track player, remove that as well. So that'll be the next steps. And now we'll go ahead and move on to step three. So step three is to remove the glove box. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into the glove box and remove that. All right, so according to the instructions here, these are all the bolts and uh, screws that we need to take out. So it uh, looks like it's these two right here. We have the hinges right there. We also have the striker up top. Uh, if you have the light still that's not busted out like mine is, you want to take that out. And they also have these side screws on the right and on the left. So I think that's everything that we need to take out. So we'll go ahead and start taking all those out and uh, see what we're left with after. There we go, we got the glove box door out, and we also have the glove box insert pulled out as well. So just as he said in the instructions, those things are not gonna make it out alive. So if yours crumbles to pieces like mine did, just order a new uh, insert liner, and uh, you'll, you'll be a lot more happier with that. So uh, we'll go ahead and get one of those ordered tonight, and uh, luckily that isn't a deal breaker of putting everything back in or anything like that. We can put it in later uh, if it takes a little bit for it to come in. But uh, the next thing we need to do is hop over to the driver's side and we need to go below the steering column to take off that panel. So let's go over to the driver's side. 
All right, so this is the two screws right here. I actually only have one in mine, so that's kind of cool. But uh, we need to go ahead and take this little panel off. So it's just a simple Phillips screwdriver, and we're going to take that off. All right, now that we've got that piece out underneath the steering column, next thing is this, uh, this AC manifold. Uh, it says it's underneath the dash, but I didn't really see that on mine. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you a picture of what it could look like real quick. But uh, it's, it says not all cars have them, and mine's not an AC car, I don't believe. So uh, I believe uh, we probably just don't have it, and uh, or it's already been taken off before because I don't see it. So uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next step, which is removing some of the air conditioning duct on the uh, left side. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I said to remove the AC duct from underneath the left side under here, kind of near the parking brake. Go back up into here. Um, I think that's the ducting, and I don't think I need to do anything with it. So if you have it still, make sure to undo it. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and move past this step and go on to the next one. All right, the next step is to take out the instrument cluster bezel. So this is held in by four screws. Two on top, so one here, one there, and then two on the bottom, which is underneath this uh, part here, and then one on the other side um, above the air conditioning and uh, heater control unit right here. So go ahead and take out those four screws, and then we'll be able to pull this back and uh, get to the gauges. All right, we got the instrument cluster bezel out. Next, we can go ahead and move on to the gauges, starting with the left one first. So that's like the fuel gauge and all the idiot lights and stuff like that. So we're gonna take that one out first and then work our way over to the right, uh, pulling them out one by one. So let's go ahead and start pulling each one of those out. All right, we went ahead and removed all the gauges. That speedometer gauge was a little bit difficult with that one clip underneath for the automatic transmission shifter to know what gear you're in. Uh, but that quarter inch wrench, uh, as described in the instructions, worked perfectly. And then the uh, back of the speedometer, where you actually have the cable going into it, uh, knowing how to do that, just pushing in and then pushing down on the clip uh, and then pulling back out that made it a lot easier actually being able to see what I'm looking at. I just shoved my phone in there real quick and just took a look. But I got all the pieces out now. Next, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the uh, radio, but we don't have to. Uh, in the instructions, that's the next step. And uh, we actually took our radio out uh, off camera a few weeks ago. I was just fiddling around with some things, uh, but kind of works out well for now because I actually needed to take it out. So it is out currently and we can move on to the next step for us, which is uh, going on to part two of the instructions, which is starting off by doing all the bulbs and uh, uh, instrument cluster uh, lights all the way around. So uh, they're just kind of all over the place. So we're just gonna go around and hit each one that we can uh, that they lined out in here. So he's saying that there's two in the foot well uh, an accessory panel floodlight, uh, there's one by the um, ashtray, the headlight switch, one in the glove box just dangling there. So we're going to go through and take out all those bulbs 
and then we'll uh, move on to the next part. All right, well, I looked everywhere and I don't see a single bulb uh, anywhere under the dash or above or side or anything like that. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step, which is actually going underneath the dash, removing all the connectors for like the wipers, the headlight switch, the air conditioning, the heater controls, everything like that. We gotta remove all of that to actually uh, um, be able to pull out the dash later. So let's go ahead and remove all those electrical connectors and uh, go from there. That was a giant pain. So I think I got almost all the connectors done. Only one I didn't do was the light one so far. I just can't reach my hand up in there and get that uh, harness off. So I don't know how anybody else does it. I went, tried to go underneath, tried going from behind the fuel gauge. I don't know how anybody else is doing it without taking the dash off and getting a little bit more room. So that's what I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to do. Hopefully that wire pulls out a little bit. But uh, next thing we need to do is uh, take off the screws that hold in the harness uh, uh, clamps so there's like four or five clamps that run across the whole entire way there's like one right here above the uh, fuel gauge another one right here above the uh, clock or the tachometer tic tac uh, clock but uh, there's about four or five of them uh, sprung all, uh, spread all the way out through the uh, dash so we're gonna go through and take each one of those out they're just quarter inch uh, bolts but we're gonna do that now All right, I went ahead and undid two of them, the ones right above on the instrument cluster. I don't think the other two or three are even in here because I was able to move around that harness everywhere. If we run into it when we're trying to take the dash out, we'll just quickly uh, zap them out real quick. But next we need to move on to the uh, AC heater control unit. Uh, there's a few screws on the back of it that we need to take loose. Not the vacuum hoses, the vacuum hoses can stay put for now. But uh, I think there's a couple screws in the back of it that we need to take loose to uh, get the next. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, we got the heater control unit you know, all dislodged. So that's looking really good. We can go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, now with all that done, we can go ahead and work on taking out the dash pad. Uh, there's supposed to be like four nuts or four bolts uh, in behind it or on the side of it that we need to take loose. So we'll go ahead and uh, look for those and see if we can get this dash pad off. Uh, he said it was a little bit of a pain because one or two might've been missing or hidden and just wasn't very clear. So let's hope that it's not terrible for us and see if we can get this dash pad off.
we went ahead and got the top dash pad all the way out. It's pretty good shape. I only seen one busted hole in the back of it where it was mounted. Not something I did. Something that was already there. But otherwise than that, it's looking good. It's out and everything like that. It was easier to get to that uh, light switch over there with it coming out a little bit of the ways. Uh, and then we also had one mystery screw uh, in the middle of the dash uh, by the instrument clusters that we didn't grab. But I went and grabbed it at the end. But uh, next, we're just gonna go ahead and, like I said, order those parts that we needed to uh, for that glove box compartment, the liner inside. And then uh, we'll go and push this inside for the night and uh, we'll work on everything else uh, another day, so. All right, it's the next day now. And I was doing a little thinking last night. I didn't feel like I gave enough information on the dash. On all. So what we'll do is go ahead and go around the dash pad's perimeter and take a look at all the bolts and screws that are on there. And then maybe a few other things like the AC or the uh, electrical connectors on uh, how all of that is just uh, hanging in there or take it off. Uh, for what, so that way it will help you when you would actually need to undo your dash pad. So let's go ahead and take that back out and I'll show you what I mean. So this is the dash pad, just like I showed you yesterday. Uh, has everything intact, nothing broke or anything like that on the way out, uh, at least on the front part. But uh, the main part I wanted to show you was on the back side. So let's go ahead and lay this down. So on the back side here, we can see a number of uh, bolts and stuff like that of where all these hidden screws and stuff stuff are. So I'm gonna start over on the passenger side. There's one right here. There's also one that goes right here, but it was busted off. It's nothing I did. Another one right here. And these are just like self-tapping, uh, self-threading self uh, plastic screws. There's another one that goes right here, but it is uh, on the inside of the car because the threaded part came out with it. I believe this is one right here. Also another one right next to the steering column. And then we have one over here next to the windshield wiper switch. And we also have one way up here. This one wasn't threaded in, or if it was threaded in, I pulled it out, uh, the uh, self-threading self nut. Uh, but it did come out successfully, thank goodness. Uh, hopefully we'll try to get that in a little bit easier. But that's pretty much everything on the back side here for those. And then right here, this is the um, secret relator. Just one cord uh, comes straight out. I don't know why that's bent, but I don't think I'm really gonna use it anyways. Not too big of a deal. This is the um, windshield wiper switch. So that just pulls off. And then this one was a pain, but it was a lot easier to do with the actual uh, dash pad coming out this one just uh, goes in like that so from the side uh, I couldn't get my hand up there if you can cool otherwise than that I mean I don't think you really have to if you can just pull the dash out a little bit but so we can go ahead and uh, put this dash off to the side because we do need to go into the car and vacuum out so let's go ahead and vacuum out the car now before I vacuum it out I want to show you what I'm uh, working with here so Lots of mice have been in this. You can see the insulation there is all torn up. Um, we're probably using it for the homes and stuff like that. Back there, you can see that where they were making a little nest or just tearing things apart back on the uh, heater box. And uh, none of the tubings are really uh, attached to anything. I mean, the heater, anything that like that doesn't work. And I don't really need the heater because I'm only driving this in the summertime. So uh, I, I don't really even need any of that. But uh, we're probably gonna take out most of the tubing, at least the, at least the parts, the ducking work that goes from spot to spot and just kind of store it off somewhere else because you just don't need it right now. So, uh, and also I'd, I'd buy new stuff if I ever wanted to actually uh, get this up back and running again. But we're gonna go ahead and take most of that out and store it and uh, clean this up. Like I said, we're gonna get out the vacuum and uh, clean it up. So let's go ahead and do that. So where I go ahead and vacuum this up, uh, this is actually going to be the end of this episode. Uh, we got a lot done. Uh, we got a lot more still to do. So in the next episode, we're going to continue with a little bit more of the dash uh, disassembly. And we got a few more panels to take apart, like the A-pillar and the kick panels down below. And then hopefully we can get to painting and uh, doing some of the more fun stuff with this interior and getting it into the uh, color black. But uh, 
If you like this video, please make sure to click like, also subscribe, and uh, check out my other ones. Thanks for watching.